Can can we just drink it? Do yeah. I have to shotgun? Rabbit holes, digressions, and a little bit of digestion. So if you're looking for a new bald man in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, because of the bubbles, there's no indigestion. You, you just know, and like, they're not wearing any pants. Unpopular opinion? Leather lung. That's the beer review. Shut up. That's the beer review. Shut up. Now we got everybody. Ah, no sausage. How dare us. Welcome back, everybody. Hello. Heavy Metal Over Six Pack Podcast. Welcome. In welcome. A, welcome. In a, in a new... Hey, guys. I think there should be like a party. Like, so we, we're doing like an official relaunch. Yeah. And Dave actually showed up today. Hey, <laughs> Dave. Dave, when's the last time you were on an episode? Ow. Uh, oh, shit. What month? Let's Bro. let's narrow it down to a month. Like was, what? What before Halloween, right? What? I can tell you right now. Oh no, it's gonna be like it August. is. It's gonna be a bear because bear. I actually oh, took some of that stuff at five eleven. May? What? Nope, I lied. Oh god, <laughs> I was like holy Bro. shit! <laughs> it's like, are you even a host anymore? That what the fuck are you doing fucking here? <laughs> killed me. That would have broken my heart. It's actually worse. It's like March. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My three was upside down. It looked like a May. Have a like Justin Timberlake May? It's gonna be May. <laughs> See, I just can't help myself. I have to touch this thing. It's like, like stuff <laughs> keeps moving on my microphone. And I just um, have to keep touching it. It looks like... I mean, granted, we've only like recorded like three episodes. September, I think, was the last one you were on. Here. All right. Nailed it. That's not too bad. I, I welcome said, back. Welcome back. August. Thanks. Regardless, welcome back. It's good to be back yeah, in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is going to be episode one of the like the massive like relaunch, and like we got some cool shit happening, and we are now in this. It can't be Studio A, like this is like no. Studio Super Duper. This is <laughs> that's not even a letter. <laughs> this yeah, is it's going to be like really obnoxious. Like, where am I going? Studio A, B, or Super Duper? No, no, this is Studio One. Oh, A. What one A? One A. <laughs> Final. <laughs> One. Final one. <laughs> this is uh, Studio G Vegas. All right, so yeah, we're moving up in the world, and like you, you still got us clowns, but like we're, we're we, we got some, we'll have some stuff to share. It doesn't make sense today because we're, we're kind of feeling it out and like you know working out the ghosts in the building and all that mm-hmm. shit. And Dave actually showed up for an episode, so we have to like reacclimate to that. Hell yep. yeah. We said all of our funny stuff about twenty minutes ago, so yeah. like this yeah, episode's, no, probably this episode's gonna, already done. We're yeah, this just, episode's just probably gonna blow right from here. <laughs> It's gonna be like forty-five minutes of bullshit. Um, I'm have to catch up on. Yeah, forty-five minutes of yeah. It's, it, so we're gonna call this episode bullshit, and later on we are gonna revitalize what to buy your heavy metal fan for Christmas. Oh, not to no, just to tease the lead a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be that guy to tease the lead. Tease the lead, but I, f- I feel like it's uh it's only appropriate to loosen everybody up, Dave, since you haven't been here in a while. Who welcome to heavy metal over a six pack. I was thinking beer, but you can do that too. Hmm. And there's beer. I hope you're all prepared for the happiest sound in the world. But before that can happen, we have a decision we oh, have right. to make here as the official team members of Heavy Metal Over Six Pack. All right. What I want you to do is I want you to put both four packs behind your back. No. And we will pick a that hand. Seems like a lot. <laughs> How about you just pick a hand and I slap you and you pick one? All right. You <laughs> in your mind, uh, you you pick heads and tails in your mind. And the dude that's like walking around like creepily in the background, I will say, Zachary, heads or tails? Oh, he picked the beer one. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that means he picked the right one. That means. Oh, there you are. Is it weird that it's black? Are we? <laughs> it's black and it's called. It doesn't first bother light. me at all. I actually prefer that. <laughs> good job. 
I smell like cheese and chocolate, but that's a different story. All right, to be fair, I, I had no other follow-up for that, so I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This here lovely beer is brought to you by Four Quarters Brewing, LLC. Quarters or quarters? Win- Winooski, quarters. Vermont? Quarters. Yeah. Four quarters. This is called First Light. Like Moon. So they have a tiny house. It's an IPA, um, and these guys are definitely not flat earthers because the picture is of a globe. So they got that going for them. This logo looks familiar. Yeah, it. I feel like I've used this before. It kind of reminded me of a horror movie I saw once. Or like every Armageddon video I've ever put on YouTube. (laughs) Oh no, we're digging into the archive. Not talking about horror movies. Come on, man. (laughs) So this is called First Light. It is a uh, India Pale Ale with mosaic hops. It is 6.5 percent alcohol by volume. It is one pint. And now for the happiest sound in the world. Oh, not gonna lie, it wasn't wasn't a great pop. I was I was hoping for a better pop. I'm gonna sniff it. it smells weird. Oh, it smells like it smells beer. Like battery I'm so sad we haven't drank beer since like September, Dave. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want out. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's actually like reverse. I, I probably haven't stopped drinking beer since like <laughs> September. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're in spiral. You're looking a little pickled. <laughs> I hate pickles. All right, I listen. Do you know how the Hulk controls the Hulk? He always stays a little bit angry. You know how a drunk controls a drunk? <laughs> you always stay a little bit drunk. Smart. But anyways. Uh, no, it's not. You can't get a hangover if you just never stop drinking. Heavy metal over a six-pack does not condone Marcus's actions or behavior. <laughs> All right, cheers, boys. Gentlemen, <laughs> let's okay. kick off Studio 1A. Yeah, dude, this place is fucking huge. It takes, like a reach. it takes like a reach to get over there. All right, one sip. Everybody knows the rules. Oh, that tastes weird. It's very uh, peachy. Yeah, it's kind of like drinking paint thinner. <laughs> What have we got? I, I was thinking tropical. Yeah, tropical. Paint. Yeah, no, I got like peach and pineapple, which I got a little which, bit of. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. Paint you, are, off the table. you are on my threshold of on pineapple because I fucking hate I said pineapple. Paint thinner, but okay. Fermented pineapple. <laughs> you, you, you fucking hate pineapple. <laughs> no, like no. I'll joke it aside. You do a uh, you do like a uh, like a truly or something like the pineapple flavor. Yep. That stuff is fucking Battery poison. Acid. Like it's horrible. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Battery acid, you scum. Like it, it's terrible. Pineapple is terrible. Like and like fruit, like not not fruit. I'm sorry, uh, cherries or berries also or stuff like that. It's like yeah, you can't you can't do that in fucking seltzer. Like lemon and lime. That's all you need. Mm. Walk away. Sometimes watermelon. But <laughs> all like, right, all right. Hang on. Time out. <laughs> but Anthony, Anthony lemon, doesn't like watermelon. Lime. How do you go to fucking watermelon? There was like, bro, there was like eight other fruits between Not that. Not even a citrus. That would have been ex- yeah, like orange or fucking, I, I don't know. See, apple. I or <laughs> fucking apple. Yeah. Have you ever put an apple in water? I yes. think. Th- I, think the, I think the thing is, I had a bad, th- I had a bad experience with Shock Top. Do you want to talk about it? I never came back. It was a different man that day. You went for milk. Wait, what? <laughs> never came back. <laughs> yeah, it was a Shock Top. It had like vanilla in it. Oh. It was like Dude, a vanilla chocolate porter. Don't even like, get me started on Choc Top. Oh, like, was it the pretzel one? No, I like that pretzel one. The one you like? It's the one oh, the, the pre- pre- it was the pretzel one. Fuck that beer. Are you, oh, what boy. do you mean you like that beer? Yeah, it was it good. Are, you, are you high? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> Damn it. They found me out. If you want to no, get I have a pet skunk, this. officer. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get higher, there's a button on the table that does that. But I yeah. gotta plug it in first. Is that, did you guys like airbag my fucking seat and I'm gonna get launched into the ceiling tiles? <laughs> you want to talk about the three smiling no. suits ever? We Let's we break run his a, neck again. We run a <laughs> podcast called Heavy Metal over a Six Pack, and now we all drive here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. At least I used to have a base point. Yep. Same. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that a digression? I apologize. How rude <laughs> What's of me. That? that was a nose dive. <laughs> I'm actually, enjoy- all right. No, I'm actually enjoying this. We don't know how. Yeah, I actually. We like never it. rated it. We just went on to well, talk I about it our t- lives. I actually don't know how to rate it. I'm still checking it out. I don't know how to talk to people anymore. We haven't done this in like. <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funnier if you can see it. It's so hard when you haven't made ear contact with someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I feel like there was a burn yeah. there, but I don't. I don't have it. <laughs> Nope. Try Too peeing. dumb to be offended. <laughs> Perfect. What's <laughs> it? <laughs> <All right. laughs> that should be our fucking slogan. <laughs> Have metal over six pack. Print too, <laughs> too <laughs> fucking dumb to be offended. Print the t-shirt. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> uh, Chris Cleveland, if you're listening, can we get the prints going? <laughs> too dumb to be offended. 
Uh, I knew I... Too dumb to be offended. I'm going to give this a four and a half. I knew I secretly hated you guys. Because I <laughs> don't like paint thinner. It's... I don't get the paint thinner vibe, bro. That's just Anthony, man. Oh. Have you, ever, have you oh, ever drank a paint thinner, David? Do you remember that time we got yelled at? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs> I was in a weird phase in college, okay? <laughs> oh, wait, I'm I remember still in college. I'd Fuck. also be in pause. I was like, listen, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm weird and awkward, and you guys need to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's love. I'm oh, sorry. That was off the camera. I apologize. Sharing personal secrets. Do you get the paint thinner vibe, producer man? No, right? It's Zach, good. Zach it's would, you like, would you like to talk about what you, uh, what you just uh, experienced right there? I can lift this for you. Carefully. No, really. All it's right. kind of gross, but it's nice. And I hate it, but it tastes good. <laughs> Remember that time we had a host who didn't drink beer? <laughs> ah, I forgot about that. <clears throat> that was a thing, wasn't it? Guys, I'm more of a whiskey guy. I was on a diet. <laughs> that was like two weeks. Yeah, I know. All right, I'm sorry. I will stop digressing this whole episode. I, I apologize. So four quarters. Four quarters. First uh, this is light. first light. Yeah. Yep, we got that. We got that. I'm sorry, uh, 6.5. That's not yeah, bad. Right. Yeah, it was much better than the 3.7 that the uh, lovely gentleman behind the counter first offered me. Like a session IPA? No, it was like a, it was like a I don't know if Pilsner log or I something. Don't, I don't know if we've ever rated a session IPA. Bro, I can't do like, look. Let's, kind of like do a, let's, let's do a nice, refreshing lemon shandy. <sighs> like, if you want me to support a local brewery, cool, gotcha. You want me to pay 18 bucks for a four-pack? Okay, whatever. Yeah, you yeah. want me to pay 18 bucks for a four-pack that's 3.7% alcohol? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, stop selling me your version of Bud Light for eighteen dollars a four. Yeah, I can get drunk a lot cheaper. Thank you very much. Well, seriously, you can. Like, a, a, now I uh, <laughs> out of this group, I mean, I'm an outlier here because, like, if I'm drinking like a fish, I will buy the cheap stuff. Oh, like, yeah. I, I, I could care less. Like, right. Just hey, saying. I like Yingling. You know, I used to like. I like Yingling better Yingling when Yingling was, like, wasn't popular, a, and then I liked it when it wasn't available in Massachusetts. When it was when it was forbidden. Yeah, yeah, like anything, you, like like anything in the world. I had to go to like New York to get a Yingling. I can't have it, but I want it. <laughs> and something about Yingling in New York was like delicious. But then Yingling came to Massachusetts, and I was like, Ugh. Mm. everything's Not- ruined in Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Hey, it crosses like that like border. It's all everything. fucked up. Probably because they taxed it. Yeah, Massachusetts. Oh shit! You guys have a podcast, Texas. What? <laughs> why? Well, that's why I have not public. <laughs> I have not publicly said that we are Wait, a nonprofit. What? I said we are a not for profit. Boom. Well, it's not for profit. Yeah, and check, even check w- the wording. You, I mean, you, look, dude. You find me precedent where I owe you guys people money because, like, all I've done is pay. Bro, the NFL is <laughs> a non profit, okay? There's ways. Yeah, but they are officially a non profit. Yeah. You can be officially a non profit. You just have to prove three years of books. We're not for profit. Exactly. You don't have to be for profit. You can be a non profit. But anyway. non profit requires tax documents. Only. Shut up and rate the beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beer review. Shut up. That's the beer review. Shut up. Uh, I'm surprised. I'm proud of my contribution to the intro. <laughs> All right, I'm just I'm just surprised that Anthony called it paint thinner and then rated it 4.5. Yeah, like that. I, I don't mind you're paint thinner. You're too fucking nice. <laughs> uh, I, I I drink it. I'll give it five. I think it's delicious. I like it. It's smooth. It pisses off Anthony, so I like it more. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. I'll tell Again, you what. Again, too dumb to be offended. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, we'll print, well, I, we will print those t-shirts. Logo on the front. Too dumb to write be it offended. on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> on the other cheek, right? At, right next to. I digress. <laughs> I digress. It, this is borderline on the. Like this is definitely tropical. You, like you definitely get like the fruit forward. It's definitely is. Like there's there's no. definitely fruit there, but I'll tell you what, it smooths out. No, it wh- smooths it out. What is like, the mo- no What is the mosaic thing? So, it's the mosaic hops. Is it just the type of yeah. hops? Is it like a fruitier hop? Yeah, because there's there's mosaic and then there's like Simcoe and then there's like uh what's the other one that everybody fucking uses? Yeah, it's um, like it's like if you had, if you had your weed, you have like indigo. <laughs> and you, have In, you say indigo, indica, indigo. Yeah. Like magenta. Indigo to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. In, In, uh, what's in, the other one? It's sativa. Sativa, yeah. I thought it From was. From what I hear. I okay. thought it was. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't confusing it with one of the Connie's Lady products. He's like, in- <laughs> indigo, saltines. I don't know. <laughs> you out of here, pal? All right. Good night, kid. Bye. I love you. <laughs>
Best response I've ever uh, That was Zach Sarah. He was actually he's a he's a house man. He he owns fifty percent of this studio. Fun fact, oh, you yeah. could buy a lot of mosaic hot pellets for five hundred and twenty seven dollars. Can I put them in my pellets though? They're eleven <laughs> they're twelve dollars per pound. <laughs> Can you imagine? Why do I feel drunk and high at the same time? It's like, that's a sativa, baby. You great. <laughs> right on top that, of that, Mosaic. That'd, that'd be my life. Um, I, uh, I, I actually doubled the five. I think this is actually a really enjoyable beer. So, yeah, it's like, it was like oh, it was like this close to being like too fruity for me. But it smooths out like so nice. And like, it, like this thing doesn't burn like whatsoever. It, it could Right, be crushable and dangerous. It's pretty smooth. I was actually surprised. And I was actually, it kind of had like, it's not like a New England flavor, but it's like a, it's like a, like you said, like a fruit. Little too, a little too tropical. To, I, I feel like to be like New England, but like you, you don't feel any hop. Does that make it a session? Okay. No, this is this ain't a session. This is oh, a straight okay. up IPA, six point five. Oh yeah, a session would be like a, like a like a three point seven. Okay, I love a good session. Uh, what's the Somebody uh, handed me a can. Like, this is a non-alcoholic IPA. And I was like, what are we talking about? <laughs> so what are you feeding me right now? Is this soda? <laughs> Is this bread soda? <laughs> That's like that canned brown bread you can buy. Dude, it's Cherry 7-Up. What the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> I like Cherry 7-Up. I love Cherry 7-Up. Yeah. I like the Blackberry ginger ale. Mm, cough syrup. syrup. Blackberry ginger ale. Yeah, that one. Well, Here's that's one. a beer review. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that was a beer review. It was. Yes. I was helping. You did good. Good job. <laughs> All, right, All right, if I may. Headlines, headlines, headlines. If I may. Right. Hopefully it's not the same as I am, because I'd be dumb. I, I don't think it is. Okay. In a calendar year, 2023, the Heavy Metal Over Six Pack podcast hosted three shows. We we did plan four, but we, uh, we, we, we were able to uh, muster up three. And earlier this season... I had declared that Heavy Metal Over a Six Pack was going to become a promoter for shows for a certain cause. And it's because our um, co-host is the founder of a cause that I truly believe in. And it's something that if I could raise even like 50 bucks for and like hand somebody like some cash, that I would be all over it. So we, we, uh, we had three shows. The first show was Okay. The second show was a little bit more brilliant, and I would like to just give credit where credit is due. The first show, we had The Flood, Helitosis, Moon Tomb, and Wolf. DC Wolves, yeah. mm-hmm. as well as um, myself and Anthony's band, Prelium. Uh, at the Raven and Worcester, which the, Ra- the Raven and Worcester has always been a, like a good venue for us, um, especially for myself as being like a like a starting promoter. Like that dude will give me a date any, basically any time I ask. We had a uh, over the summer, which we also featured the flood. Uh, we brought out Creation from Crisis. Yep. We had Karen's Worst Nightmare, mm-hmm. and again our band Prelium. And Moon Tomb, I think, was there again. No Moon Tomb. Dead no Dead Fiction. Thank you. Dead Fiction. No dead fiction this year, boys. Oh, that was a four-band slate. It was a four-band ba- 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 four slate. Four band slate. I get it mixed with the Halloween ones. That's yeah. why. Halloweeners. The holiday ones? The the Christmas? Yeah. And then this year, we had our third annual Holy F and Metal Christmas party, mm-hmm. which we tried to change it up a little bit this year. We tried to do a little bit of familiarity. We brought a uh, tribute to System of a Down, Bullet Called Life. So a huge shout-out f- to those boys. And... They actually allowed me to give them a four-band slate prior to them of original music, which was Prelium, Moontomb, Frenemy, our old friends Frenemy, yeah, who bad. are actually back and up yep. and running with the original lineup, yep. original singer, cool. original bass, original guitar, original drummer, which is absolutely awesome mm-hmm. for them, and Fate of the Damned, yes. which is uh, some old friends of ours, like yep. some previous yep. members of the Machine Gun Mayhem crew. Yep. And the and their new sound. Um, that show was actually recent. I'm happy to say. So the summer the summer show, I, I believe we were able to hand uh, I, I believe we were able to hand, hand you Dave about twelve hundred bucks. That's right. Like somewhere in that ballpark. Yep. I'm happy to say that in my hand right here is like a like a like a, a cunt hair under a thousand dollars that I am going to hand over to the minus twenty two foundation. That's fucking badass. Based off of the. Uh, 
And I would like to give a shout out to the gentleman who actually won the 50-50 raffle who donated his $65 back to this fund as well, yep. which is in, in, included right here. So that's crazy. We are absolutely honored to do our little part. Dude. And I would love to give a shout out to like the bands because like, you know what? The biggest thing about like doing like a charity show is the bands have to be willing to do it. Right. For so sure. all those bands that I listed, especially like bands like The Flood that yep. have done it multiple times, bands like Boon Tomb that have done it multiple times, yep. uh, Creation from Crisis, which yep. which hopped on. Um, you know, we'll play for anybody. Like we'll probably pay people <laughs> Pretty for much. us to play. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the bands to um, contribute their time, their efforts put on a full set and like we put a lot of effort into like putting on a legit show for mm -hmm. sure it was a huge turnout man i saw all the photos and all, all the other stuff it was awesome and uh, that's, uh, that's always been like the thing so anytime that like we pro we promote shows like I've, we're trying to give the live music experience to like those bands that way they i basically want every band to like come off of our stage literally feeling like a rock star and those guys are willing to actually put forth their efforts. And, like, we declared it, like, early on this year. I said every show that Heavy Metal over a six-pack promotes is going to be for the Minus 22 Foundation. Bro. So I am more than proud to give the efforts of those bands and hand you this pile of cash, bro. Dude, I um, honestly thank you. I can't, I can't say thank you enough start off by just basically saying thank you uh it doesn't even cover it i i can't i can't believe that we're to the point where we are where we have people that believe in us so much to do this stuff like i can't say enough nice things about you guys for for supporting us and everything that we're doing um i definitely can't say enough nice things about all the bands that have come out and supported us and done these things as well um i dude i'm just blown away uh I, I'm gonna find a way to pay you back somehow for your support. You stop it. No, you I'm stop. gonna. No, I'm no, gonna. No, no, no. I am gonna stop you right there. Cause like for for one thing, it's not you guys. It's us guys. Yes. And you did something outside of us guys that is so unbelievable and is like so on the level and like for the right reason. Like it, it's like it's not even a question. It's like it's like oh, what do you want to support? I want to support that. Well, I, dude, I, I just, honestly, man, I'm going to start crying. I can't, uh, I, I just can't thank y'all enough because, like, dude, I knew I had I knew I had to do something. I knew I had to do something different. And, um, you know, we're to the point now where Minus 22 is sponsoring four families nationally, and we're growing, you know. Uh, those are four families in need that we're able to provide gas and grocery gift cards for, so we wouldn't be able to do that without you guys' support. And for our previous, our, our last golf tournament, uh, we put the Heavy Metal Over Six Pack logo on the title belts for the winners. You know, so heavy metal over six pack. Those pictures we still got to post. We've been having social media issues because our team is kind of all over the place right now, dealing with replacements and everything. But um, I, I wanted to. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to posting all that stuff because like those those title belts were a huge hit. You know, and like the heavy metal over six pack logos on the side. Like we wouldn't have been able to do that stuff without you guys' support. And so I honestly can't thank y'all enough. And I say you guys because yeah, we're all one. But like you guys did this entirely on your own you know like you guys you didn't like there was no consulting me until you guys had already made a decision you know so like that's what i thank you for it was an easy it was an easy cause to pick and we thank you for actually setting Absolutely. that up for like our our returning veterans and the families and of course the uh, the cause that you're uh, you're focusing on mm -hmm. um i owe you a show though that's all right because in February, I said uh, I said there would be four. You don't look. You don't owe us anything, man. No, no, you guys, I owe you no, a show. No, you guys have done more for us than than so many others have done. Like, you, you, and in like, April, I have that show ready for you. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> well, I'm and I'm gonna to mix you. the genres. <coughs> it's gonna be like a rock. I want to get some rock in there. Okay. I want to get some rock. I want to get some metal. Can we get some bag lady in there, huh? And I actually wanted to. Uh, that's a good idea, actually. Mm. I wanted to get some podcasts like out there because we got Let's we got go. a pile of friends and like mm -hmm. some podcasts for sure. Here so I'm thinking the rock and metal podcast festival, like something like a ramp fest. Yes, like a first annual ramp fest. Hell yeah! You got a venue? I do. Okay, we're gonna do it in April, so I'm gonna keep it indoors. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my boys like over at the 747 Eagles. Okay. All right. 400 person capacity, and I actually want to see 400 tickets sold for that. That'd one. be great. That'd be That'd be phenomenal, dude. That'd be a great time. Yep. 
So that, that that's the plan. I told you, I owed you, I owed you a four show. <laughs> you don't though. You don't owe me anything, man. You don't know. Well, owe's a like. bad word. I said <laughs> I was doing four shows this year, and like you know, I fell, I fell off on three. That's all right. Listen, life happens. You know, I can tell you, uh, being in the nonprofit world, you can plan as much as you want to, but my uh, wife beat me. I couldn't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> you stay here. Blink twice if you're in a safe position. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with his eyes? <laughs> No, but dude, I, seriously, I, I, I'm super appreciative. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, three years ago, this was just an idea that I had. You know, I was just, mm-hmm. I was in a in a really bad way. I was hurting uh, mentally and emotionally with everything, and um, you know, being able to step out and do this, and then see how many people have actually come around it and supported us. Like, I, I I'm just. I'm super blown away. Uh, I'm going to say thank you like probably 40 million more times. It's going to oh, be of obnoxious. Course. You, know, like, my, and you know, my part's easy because all I have to do is like I have to state the cause, state what we want to do, and state how we're going to do it. And like the bands like just jump on. That's why I give all the credit in the world of the bands. Yeah, for sure. Um, I gave I give all the credit of the world. Like so, uh, this uh, this past one, Jake Hawkins, like uh, actually like stood up. He's one of your board members. Yeah. Used yep. to be one of our band members. Like he's been on the podcast before. He actually got up on stage and like he he said some words that were that were just absolutely awesome. Yeah. And I can't thank everybody enough for like who's just willing to be like, oh yeah, I'll play. Uh, yeah, I'll play music for that. I'll sell tickets for that. Like, exactly. I, I I don't think we we have ever sold as many tickets over like a few events <laughs> that we have like this past year. And like, it's only because of that. I had bands actually saying, even if you can't go to the show, just buy a ticket because it's going to go to the right cause. Damn, dude, that gave me chills. That's like uh, so like ba- a band from Rhode Island. Like so, even if you can't go there, just like you know what honor this cause by buying a ticket and i'm pretty sure that happened because like we had some online ticket sales that we did didn't yeah. register so <laughs> i yeah. mean that that's a thing like all you got to do is put the put the cause put the reason and put a little incentive because hey listen you could have bought a pretty affordable ticket and you got you got a pile of pile of pretty kick-ass music over a few hours well that's just it too though and that's that's what's phenomenal about us like these bands all the bands that you mentioned like i've rocked out to all these bands you know over the last couple of years i've been honored of, uh, like i've had the opportunity to see some of these bands from other the other shows that we put we put on like bro these guys melt faces and like the fact that bands that we that, got pretty cool friends that i appreciate and like <laughs> that i rock out and jam to are like hey man i want to support like that I, I don't even know what to say like i'm i'm just like flabbergasted like i don't I can't wrap my head around that. I like, dude. Thank you so much for everything that you guys have done and decided to do. Because honestly, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing without support like yours. Just we're play, happy to we're happy play, to be play, there play, in a small part. And I am motherfucking proud to be part of the heavy metal over six pack family. Because we're proud to have you, kid. Our fucking crew is pretty fucking badass, and our fucking teams and everybody that we we link up with our network. Everybody like, dude, this whole. New England and like even, but it's not even just New England. We have friends and bands that are from all around the country. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That that are just super underrated. That have crazy talent. Like mm-hmm. whatever, uh, dude. Whatever I can do to, to support these people and support this network, I'm just gonna keep on putting my lifeblood into man. Dude, I get all ta- I get all tingly, man. Like that when we went out like like December, January, like last year, and we like, we met up with like um, Cutthroat Conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. No, not yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Cutthroat, Cutthroat. Yeah. Yeah. out of Texas, right? And like. All we had to do is say, "Oh, we're Mark and Anthony," for it. and like they were. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. "It's like oh, wild." They were like famous. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> we gotta, we gotta get the uh, the journal badges, the journalism badges. You know what I mean? The we media like, passes. Yeah, exactly. We're like, oh, we're, we're media. We we come through here. We're cool. Yeah. You know, bro. We gotta bring life back to the the indie rock stuff and the indie, like, dude. Metal's so underrated anyway, and like. There's so many talented bands out here that are just giving it their fucking all. And, like, we're in the age of technology right now. We're like, dude, literally to support, all you have to do is stream. That's it. You could click. You're one click away from supporting a fucking local band that melts faces. Like, that's so badass. Like, let's harness that shit. You got a second quick announcement? And then, like, because, like, so the head metal over six pack. We've been, so we just did our third annual, like, Christmas party. Or holiday party, whatever you, whatever you want to call the thing. We've been trying to do this for like a couple of years. We're gonna rebrand it like a smidge. Like we're gonna like, like we're still obviously heavy metal over a six pack. Like it's gonna be Mark Anthony and Dave in like in like some shape, way, shape, or form. Um, we're gonna take like one of our segments. It's gonna actually turn into Smash Banana Productions. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Presented by Heavy Metal Over Six Pack Podcast. 
like so we we just want to i want to streamline like the the visual and like the like what the podcast is trying to do and the whole purpose of like the actual promotion team is to give the local artists and like the underground artists the opportunity to one play a kick-ass show that is well run yep well set up yep like we are the, we are going to be the team that's going to set up the venue set up like all of your production set up your lights set up your sound you are going to go up there. You are going to be treated like a rock star. You're going to feel like a rock star. You're going to have mm -hmm. the opportunity to play like a rock star. And we are going to do it either for the cause, like with the, the minus 22, or the other causes, the opportunity for you guys to actually put the money in your pocket. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's one thing that I don't think promoters necessarily do. Like all, And you know what? We all have... We all have overhead that we have to cover. Right. Me running these shows, I have overhead that I have okay. to cover. Right. But anything that like actually comes into our shows is either has to go back to the artists or go back to a cause that like we believe in. And oh, those yeah. are the two things that um, Smash ba Smash Banana Productions is going to uh, is going to do. So moving forward, if you start seeing some shit like on the social medias, like some maybe some new logos, some new info, and. We gotta start. We gotta start like bringing the team together because, like, I mean, we're three dudes. We're three dudes. We're th <laughs> we have three adult lives. Yeah. And yes, sir. there's gonna be there's gonna be some opportunities out there to actually jump on a team. So I mean, if you are in the New England area and like, hopefully, I mean, don't call me crazy. We can start doing chapters places if like you know people want to cool. like get in on stuff like that. Hell yeah. But I mean, we're a New England-based uh, podcast, so I mean that's like basically where this is gonna this is gonna start. This is where the epicenter is gonna be. But Flagship. our our um our focus is always either gonna be artist-driven or it's gonna be a cause that we believe in. And so the minus twenty-two is one of the ones that I truly believe in. Well, thank you so much. I, uh, I can't say it enough. I I don't know what else to say, dude. You guys are fucking awesome. I. I uh, you're fucking awesome. <laughs> well, I disagree, but thank you. I um. How dare you, <laughs> dude? You know what? It's uh, it's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, man. Like, you know, um, it's definitely a. Uh, I'm not. It's a tough mission, you know. Um, but it's one that that you know, navigating these last couple years and and figuring everything out, like seeing the need in the community. Like, clearly, people need this. You know, like we wouldn't have four families if if they didn't need it, right? And so. Like, bro. Uh, there's a um, there's a podcast that's on the airwaves right now. It's uh called the uh Beard and the Beef. Beard and the Beef. The yeah. Beard and the Beef podcast. And Dave goes like extensively into like a lot of these details. Like he was a uh, special guest on their episode. I think it was episode three. It was. Yeah, episode three. Yeah. Just talking about minus twenty two and the origins of it. You know, they had a lot of really loaded questions for me, and I felt like it was powerful. Know, well, yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. I try to. I honestly. I don't remember what I said because I never really remember. Like when I'm speaking from the heart, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, it just I don't, comes out. Yeah, I don't have like a script. I don't. But that's like, why it I works. Just, that's why you know. actually, I actually, not to interrupt you, it's like that's why I would actually refer you. Like check out this podcast and actually like listen to Dave, like because like he just opens up and like it's it's a straight up like honest approach to like everything that they're doing, like what they're able to accomplish. For sure. And it's serious. It's powerful. Like there's not like. You get a couple of chuckles in there, so I mean, don't yes. go in there thinking that like it's going to be like a comedy fest. But <laughs> I tell yeah. you what, the information is like fantastic. I re I listened to the episode and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is after I hosted like three shows. So I was like, oh, <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, really? But, that, but I mean, worry, it's man. but it's an uncomfortable topic. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, point blank period. It's just it's it's something that a lot of people aren't knowledgeable on. It's something that we don't talk enough about. And so I try to I try to do as much as I can respectfully. By speaking about it, but also to to a point that's not going to be detrimental to the idea, right, dude? When I started this out, when I when I started like when I was like, dude, I don't know, I, I, I didn't know anything about nonprofits before I got in this game, right? I didn't know anything about anything, and like getting into it, I had to go to a lot of events that were like, dude, it just felt like getting kicked in the heart. Like you go to some of these like fundraisers, and it was just like it was brutal, you know. And like I learned a lot from those experiences. I'm grateful for them, but at the same time, I was like, you know what? I want to do something different, like. I want people to actually go out and actively support a cause that they want to support, but doing something fun. Like I want to put the fun in fundraising because it's not a fun topic. You know, it's not. It's not nice. It's not. It's not. It doesn't give you a warm and fuzzy to talk about military suicide. But at the same time, if we don't talk about it, it's only going to get worse, right? Right. So, like so, anything. Right. Friends, but yeah. And that's our whole thing, you know. Like, uh, uh, like I said, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you know uh, awareness without action is useless, and so. 
We want to acknowledge, assist, and advocate for the families that, that are affected by military suicide. And, uh, and we want to do as much as we can to, to support them in their time of need and even after. And that's something that we've been voting on, you know, as a board, like some of these families. Like, uh, I mean, I think about it, uh, these families, uh, it was less than a year ago that we were, people didn't even know who we were, that we were available, that we were a resource for people, you know. So some of these families are coming up on their graduation point. Like, how are we going to stay in touch? How are we going to, you know, make sure that we can right, continue right. support? And that's, and that's some of the things that we're learning as we go. And it's been a great experience. Um, I'm super grateful that that we're able to do this stuff for these families, you know, and, and especially around the holidays and stuff like it hits a little heavier. But it's, uh, my, you know, my I, I'm, I'm, I'm big. I'm open about my mental health. Right. Anybody in my circle can check my mental health at any time. I want them to. I want people to know the shit that I struggle with so that we can have these conversations so it can be normal. So nobody figures or nobody feels like, oh, like I can't say that I can't I can't open up. I can't be real. I struggle with depression. I struggle with anxiety. I struggle with uh, a lot of stuff from some of my military experience stuff or whatever. Um, but I want to be open and vocal about that. And so, like, my wife, you know, she asks me all the time, like, like, hey, you know, are, are you going to be able to keep fielding these phone calls with these families that are in crisis? And I told her, like, dude, I'd, I'd, I would rather get punched in the heart 60,000 times a day if it means that we're going to be making a positive difference for that family. And that's what we're doing. And it's it is it's rewarding. Um uh, I'd say it's painful, but it's it's beautifully painful, you know, because I think about where these families would be if we did not exist, you know what I mean, and, and how much further up the river they'd be. So I don't want to take any more time about that, but I just super appreciate you guys believing in us, and uh, I, I literally cannot thank anybody enough for supporting the Minus 22 Foundation because I was just a random mass hole out of nowhere that had an idea. And now all these hundreds and now thousands of people have come around to support it, and I, I don't even know what to do with that. Yep. I, I have don't no ever doubt. Like, mm-hmm. we are we are happy to support. And like I said, I, I give all the credit in the world to like all the bands that like will join for sure our efforts to uh, support you guys. Yeah, so. we got to get them and some we're, swag. We're uh, we're we're happy to uh we're happy to give you a platform as well. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. well, I appreciate it because it can't be said more. It can't be said enough. For sure. Yeah. All right. Deep breaths. Take another swig. Well, that's a minus 22 review. <laughs> uh, dude, I love you, kid. I, I, re- I really do. Hell yeah. I love you guys. This is fucking awesome. I'm so glad we're fucking back. We're back in action, man. Kicking and, names and taking ass. And fucking yep. legit. <laughs> all right, that's Bro, all the news I had. Legit that's all you, like, actually, you know, it's kind of funny because I... It's a small news, but it actually goes with what you, what you brought up about the, um, like getting money in, in uh, the band's pockets. So I don't know if you guys are aware of like merch fees. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And how big that is, and how much of an mm-hmm. issue it's become. Yeah. It's become thing. it's kind of become a thing. It's, like, it's everything. Dude, Apparently, so we don't want venues to like take twenty five percent of our merch sales. Yeah. So, did you see the Ronnie Radke thing? Mm-mm. You guys are aware of that video? No, mm-hmm. you probably do. I'm gonna play the audio okay. from it. So this is him from a show. Uh, it was actually at um, it was a radio station that put it on, and it was like him, Daughtry, and Sleep Theory. Hmm. And it was like a Christmas. I guess they do it every year. At least the radio station does it every year. Yep. So this is what Ronnie said to, you know, to feel here. And I want to let you guys know something. It has nothing to do with the radio station. It has to do with this venue. This venue was trying to charge us 25% of our fees. We had to pay this venue. This venue. Hold on. So what that would mean is we have to charge you guys way more to even make any money. So what I did was, fuck them. Fuck that. Fuck them. We're not paying you guys fucking shit. That's fucked up. If you guys want our t-shirts, you can go online and pick them up. We'll probably lose a little bit of money from doing this. But I ain't fucking, I ain't doing that shit. I'm not selling my merch to give 25% to this fucking venue. Fuck you guys. Fuck this so, Good. Fuck you. Good. And I'll say it to your fucking face, too. Yep. Um, yeah, so they cleared their whole merch booth yep. because of the uh, 25% rate. You know what the wild thing is, though, too, is that so I, I've i been watching this guy, um, Tank the Tech. Yep. 
Um, so he he's a touring manager, so he knows like all the and he was explaining a bit. So this twenty five percent is off the gross, right. mind you. Oh my god. So if let's say big band you make forty K, you're giving ten grand directly to the venue, not including all the fees that have to roll in after. Fuck that. And you yeah, you you pay the taxes and they get the chunk. Well, I actually said Devil's advocate, we've had this conversation before. Because, like, as a promoter, like, somebody has actually come at me before. It's like, hey, what's this show for? Mm. Like, your bands can't be selling stuff, like, because, like, there's, like, a tax that's included. Like, so, like, is this, does this cover? Th- I, I, I only ask, and I'm completely not in the know. Do venues, are venues actually responsible for the tax on any sales that happen in their house? So, typically the answer would be yes, but at the same time, unless they are producing, because, so here's the thing, they're going to have to, uh, your agreement no. is going to have to come with a fucking W-9. You got a fucking W-9 to give because I'm so, technically now your employee because you're like, that's I'll take, a, I'll take a bit, I'll take a big Massachusetts venue. I have never gone to the Palladium. If I see a shirt on the, on the wall for 40 bucks, it costs me 40 bucks to take that shirt off the wall. Right. Like, there's never been like a tat, like, right. I, I am all, I am almost just curious and like, I am not for any venue taking any money out of anybody's pockets, but do they have to do this to cover themselves? Like, are they actually? No, because I, I don't even think twenty percent like actually no. covers like the. So no. uh, if I'm, cor- I mean, my assumption would be, um, it usually has to do with like a certain amount that you make, right? Right, like anything. So if you're a band that makes a certain amount yearly, they're gonna tax you on it. But it's right, also, like that would well, be. It'd be no different than if, like, example, like Venmo right now. Like, well, if you do something through Venmo, you're over a certain amount, you're gonna get a W whatever number. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. For sure. Um. As far as I understand it, though, the so like, the venue's renting you a space, right? Like. Technically, that that is their business. Their business is renting the space. You paid for the rented space. But you're, I mean, you're also selling the tickets, right? So, but you're making them money, right? So Correct. Like, so, like ticket sale percentages, that right? That always goes part venue, part yes. band. Like that's understandable. The thing is, as soon as look, every okay, everybody right now is getting squeezed. Everybody, the economy sucks. Prices are up. Sharks are in the motherfucking water. Anywhere there's money, everybody wants a fucking piece of it, and they're finding every single way they possibly can to put their fingers into it. Think about it. In the last, bro, in the last 10 years, or let's say the last 15 years, okay, phone salesmen have turned into car salesmen. Have you noticed this? Like now there's payment plans for yeah. phones, and there's all this, and everybody's figuring out how to make their business like a car salesman's business. Uh-huh. That's, that's all they're doing. Oh, here's... Oh, but there's the warranty, and there's a, and it's all a fucking racket. Honestly, all of it's a racket. It comes down to, hey, you're making money, and I want a piece of it. But their venue staff is not working the merch tables. What the fuck are you paying for? What security? You're thing. paying security for the ticket sales that we already paid. I for? I actually really just want like a legit answer, and like there has to be like you're a promoter or a venue like representative that could actually say is like. If you come into our house and sell a product, you are actually responsible for the taxes. Because Ma- like Massachusetts, is, we are in Massachusetts. Yep. Uh, w- what's our fucking tax rate right now? Like 7% or something? For income? Something fucking retarded. So in, in Massachusetts, for income, you have to pay both taxes, which is both federal, federal, federal in Massachusetts, Massachusetts, which yeah, amounts to 15%. Yep. Well, that's income. <clears throat> but at the same time, no, there's no taxes on mer- like like a shirt. If I buy a shirt, there's no taxes on like apparel. Apparel and food, right? Yeah, like clothes and food. Food and clothing. Well, there's a meal tax, so if it's yeah. prepared food, yes. right? I, I I get that. So yeah, I actually just want to know that actual answer. That way, I because I I wanted I want to know how I can appropriately be angry. You need to make <laughs> you need to make friends with an. Account. No, I, we laugh, but like I'm actually I actually want to know if I can appropriately be angry. But really, like we have had the opportunity to play the Palladium. They did not ask us for a no. percentage. No. And we sold more merch that day than I think we have in every show that we played combined. Yeah. But I've heard the Palladium be labeled 
as one of the ones that request um, like percentage. a percentage of your a percentage of your sales. It was like if you if you set up a merch store. Now, great, we were downstairs. I I don't know. Well, I, I, maybe little, it's a scale thing. I am it, just it trying to be devil's advocate. Yes. Ad. Ad. Advocate. Yep. Where's ad. 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 Cop hat. Yeah. No. Like no, I'm but, trying not to jump on any, but like I'm sorry. Radke's a dick. Can't be. Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of, but I respect him for at least using his dickishness to stand up to a fucking venue. Like, honestly, I think we're gonna see more of that. Yeah, yeah but you, you know just, what I don't want to see? Bridge, but he's doing, he's martyring himself right there. You know what I don't want to see? Radke has enough plays and sales and like whatnot. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to pull his merch from a fucking venue. Like, what if you are like, what if that was your one opportunity? Like, maybe you're a fan of Falling in Reverse. And that's your one opportunity to get a shirt. And Dickweed, like, fucking pulled his merch because, like, he's not going to get... Like, what's that t-shirt cost? I'm well, sorry. Uh, uh, what's well, that t-shirt cost? Is it 45 fucking dollars like some of these goddamn headliners, like, actually put up? Well, like, I don't know your if... $3 t-shirt you're going to charge us $45 for? He said that's a lot of the times why they have to charge so much because of that extra fee. Right. I do apologize. When the hosts are hard listening, <laughs> no, I no. do uh, take care of... Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> but that's, but no, that is, that's very real. And so, uh, so like right now. It's like, dude, suck up the fucking 20% then. And it's like, I, but I, I don't know. I, I'm really torn on this thing. Like, I, like as a band, like obviously I don't want to like give anybody any kind of, of like free money. But right. if there is some kind of thing that the promote. So here's, here's the thing. The promote, you know, this is what I do know. The promoters are responsible for more than what people think. Yes. No, they absolutely are. And look, when you get a good promoter first, like that is your bread and butter right there for a good show is your fucking promoter. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of networking. It takes a lot of knowing people and knowing what people want to be able to market it properly to get it to into the eyes and ears of people that you, you think are going to be able to spend money on the show. Mm. Huge, huge ups to promoters. I have no shade to throw up promoters other than the fact that it's a money grab. There's all this racketeering that goes in into all this bullshit. They're going to charge you for uh, at the end of the day, you're paying for their experience. Oh, you want twenty thousand people to show up to this show? Yeah, I can get you that, but I'm gonna need a piece. It's dude, everything's become the mafia, and like, and and I say this as somebody whose family members are literally in the mafia. <laughs> like, like, bro, it's a racket, and you call it a racket because it's racketeering. They are nickel and diming every single aspect of the industry now because everybody's getting squeezed. Cost of everything, cost of living, cost of products, cost of any good is is getting exorbitantly out of hand right now. It is crazy expensive to live. And mm-hmm. every single aspect where people are making money is now getting squeezed because everybody wants their money back from everything they're paying for all the overhead costing. And so now it's like a civil war, right? It's like a civil war in commerce right now is what's happening. And it's because, hey, I, I, let's look. Let's just let's just point the finger where it is. The government's fucking me, so fuck you. That's literally what it is, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, and so, the government's gonna say, "Oh, we want more tax. We want this." Da, da, da. And like, you're just gonna squeeze the shit out of the middle class and all these other people that right. uh, that are band merch. Be damned. I, I would I would say it's like if you have the opportunity to like sell a product at a certain price, like that should be the price of the product. Right. For sure, but. As I'm saying, so like, uh, and this is totally different genre, okay? Totally different genre, totally different, um, to- uh, n- not necessarily the same, but also not necessarily different. Oh, go T Swift? I think those T Swift's up to like 60. Uh, bro, she honestly, honestly though, all respect in the world to T Swift, bro, that Eras tour banking $4 billion. $4 billion. And all the songs that she played were the versions of her songs that she created after she got screwed out of her rights. Yeah. Like, I have nothing bad to say about Taylor Swift anymore. I know I've said bad things about Taylor Swift even on this show. Wait, wait, wait. All respect in the Wait, world. wait, wait. Stop it right now. She screwed out of her rights? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So her manager, uh, Scooter, yeah, her manager, Scooter, sold her rights for $385 million to she another record label. She signed that contract. She did. She signed the contract to get her rights after 15 years. 
The 15-year mark hit two years ago. She was supposed to get them, and he found a loophole in yep. her contract to be able to sell them to someone else. Yep. So he made double his money off of her and fucked her over. So mm -hmm. in return, what she did is she made an acoustic album of all of her songs that she'd already done. No, she re-recorded all of her songs. Yeah. But it wasn't made, even acoustic. It, she just yeah, re-recorded re it. But she so made she had slight the actual variations. Master, she, had the yes. master con yes. she had the master tapes. The master tapes is where, where it counts. And then she went on that tour as a big fuck you to everybody in the music industry that's fucking over artistry right now. And the thing that I wanted to reference on top of that is Oliver Anthony, who blew yeah, up this gonna, past year. I'm not going to defend her for signing a stupid contract. Well, But Oliver Anthony, who blew up this past year for his song, Rich Men North of Richmond and Country Music, he was, like, recorded in the woods, right? Like, mm -hmm. turned this whole big thing. It's kind of political song, polarized a fuck ton of people. He blew up overnight. Record labels were offering him, like, $8 million for a signing deal. He's like, I don't want that shit. He's like, I want to just keep playing my music the way I want to. I don't want eight tour buses. I don't want two private jets. Like, I just hey, I want to make my music. So he wanted to be his own, his own independent artist. He started playing shows, and the first show that he played was a was a 15-acre farm that sold out, and there was no parking mm -hmm. at a 15-acre fucking farm. And he, he played the shit out of J, uh, uh, Jamie Johnson, classic country artist, showed up and, and played with him. Anyway, he had all the success. So he lines up a venue in, I want to say Knoxville. I don't remember the name of the venue. Don't really want to badmouth them. They might come after us. I don't know. They line up this show. They Come agree, at me, bro. They <laughs> agree to the price with Oliver Anthony, right? And he says, hey, like, I want to meet my fans. The VIP shit, like, the VIP shit is free. I don't want to, whatever. They started selling tickets and charging people, like, $250 for VIP shit. And he found out about it, like, two days later. And so he contacted them and was like, yo, what the fuck? Like, this was not part of my agreement. And they doubled down. And we're like, oh, this is how we're going to recoup our, our costs for venue security and drinks and staff. And, all. and it's like... I've actually heard that about the VIP thing. Like, there's a there's um, Dead Reckoning is a band that I follow on, like, Facebook. And they, they've had this issue before. Yeah. Where, like, there's actually charges for, like, doing, like, a VIP thing. And, and it's... But it's bullshit. It's how the venue literally fucks you over. So Oliver Anthony literally canceled his show. And he's like, hey, don't give these people any money. He stood on it. He's like, don't give them any money. We're going to relocate the show somewhere else to an honest venue that's not going to fuck us over. This venue then doubled down again. They tripled down on this shit and, like, did this whole slander campaign against him and then stood on and shut comments off on all of their... So, I did time comments oh, yeah. shut off. You know that's good. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you're not guilty. You just uh. shut fucking... Yeah, you won't have... And, like, dude, people... So everybody started commenting on all their other fucking posts and blowing this shit up. And, uh... But honestly, dude, like... Artists need to start standing up for themselves. Mm -hmm. This is bullshit. And it's like, dude, like, if you're going to try to control the venue, like, this is, and this is my thing, too. Why the fuck don't we just make an, a, a new venue? A new venue for artists. Like, by artists, for artists, let's create the fucking show. You get a piece, we get a piece to keep going, and we keep going for everybody. Like, all these money-grubbing business motherfuckers have ruined the music industry. Because now it's pay-to-play. Oh, it's, it's a 1% business now. Mm -hmm. It's fucking pay-to-play. 1% can actually make it and right. and support themselves. Right. 99% of us. Right. And I'm saying us, kids. 99% mm -hmm. of us are probably working day jobs yep. and yep. just lost in the that mush of uh, mush. fucking oversaturation. Yep. Like, and... That that's basically it. Like it, it turned into a like a one percent business. It has nothing to do how cool you are, how good you are, how talented you are. And there's a lot of talent out there. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of it, and and it's it's underwrited by all this fucking business bullshit and, and jargon and garbage. Lawyers and business people have sank their fucking fingers into this shit, and this is why when people get managers and sign to big fucking record deals, they have no idea what the fuck they're signing away. Like. Oh, this is what I love about Jelly Roll, right? Jelly Roll is an independent <laughs> artist. Like, say whatever the fuck you want to about him, but he's he fucking made it on his own. He didn't sign shit with anybody. Mm -hmm. And he said, dude, I'm in Nashville. Tried a couple of genres, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah, he's, he's like, I'm in Nashville working with people who have been on the Billboard charts, right? They're, they're on top of the Billboard charts. They haven't gotten paid for their number one song in five years. Can That's you imagine that? That's not surprising. Can you fucking imagine that? Like, I, I, it's like, uh, dude, there's... There's, so like, there's there's a um there's a book that I purchased recently that I'm reading because I'm trying to get more and more educated about the music industry because like you hear terms and stuff, but it doesn't really make sense sometimes and like negotiations and everything like don't always go the way you want them to. There's a book that I recently purchased that I'm like a third of the way through. It's by Donald S. Passman. Okay, 
I would recommend every single musician read this book. Yep. Donald S. Passman. It is called Everything You Need to Know About the Music Industry. It is in its 14th edition. He Damn. updates it as far as social media. He updates it as far as like everything contemporary to it, and he breaks it down into sections where you can understand it and how the music industry operates. This has been eye-opening for me. Understanding how the percentages break down and what you're actually signing away. Dude, every single artist should do this. Every single artist should listen to this. And especially in the day and age where it's technology, everything's a click away. You can, I'm not saying it's easy, right? It's not easy by any means. But it's simple enough where you can upload all of your own shit onto the internet and let the internet fire take hold, right? If it takes off, that can be 100% yours. And you can figure out how to navigate and then how to negotiate and represent yourself against these sharks in the water. More artists need to do this. Uh, you got to pay attention to the fine print. Venues are clearly shitty between uh, security issues mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, <laughs> fucking merch percentages. Like, dude, they come after you any way they can. Oh, yeah. And, like, the reason everyone's getting squeezed right now is because insurance companies are going through the roof. Insurance rates are crazy up right now, right? Like, uh -huh. everybody's insurance has gone up. And that's literally just the insurance companies being like, hey, you know what? Nah, we don't have enough money for this shit. Like, they are setting the tone for the economy, and people are just rolling over and taking it. And how do we fight back? Well, we fight back by utilizing commerce against them. You need to understand commerce before you can weaponize it. If we can weaponize our own commerce in the music industry and have a venue that's actually for artists, that takes care of people, bro, uh, we're going to change the game. And we're going to tell all these business people, lawyers, and everybody else to go fuck off. Except for Donald Passman, because he's an entertainment lawyer for like 40 years. Known so the industry. He knows all this great. stuff. Exactly. But that, he wrote this book. And he gets shit from other lawyers about producing this book to people and teaching people about it. Because lawyers love to charge people for this information. Bro, read the book. Read the book. Get into the nitty gritty of it. Understand how it works. And understand how to say fuck you to these big wigs that motherfucking try to rob you. I don't think you got enough convo out of that show. That story. <laughs> um... <laughs> My last, actually, kind of wrapping it up here. Uh, so, <laughs> it's still to Anthony do. Anthony wants to go home. To do no, no, no. To, 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 to kind of like home. to kind of close all this in. Uh, so, there's a new streaming platform that will be released 2025. Kit caught. It's called Rock R O K K. It's actually created by I believe one of I don't remember which guitarist of Blind Guardian and and someone else. So essentially, it is a streaming service similar to Spotify or Tidal or whatever you guys use. But essentially, it is um, it's supposed to be for rock and metal music. Mm. Uh, so it was founded by uh, Alex uh, Landenberg, drummer of Camelot. Not the other band. Camelot's the one I was thinking of. And Peter Moog um, from Power Metal Outfit Mentalist. Uh, so essentially, it's there will be over 200 subgenres from both rock and metal available on the upcoming streaming service. Dope. But it is quite aware of the fact that metal and rock fans like to listen to music from all genres. So of course, every other thing will be Dewey though. Dewey. Because <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, if there's 200 genres of metal, I'm number 197 only. Uh. So I, I love when I love when people tell me what kind of music I like to listen to. That's my favorite subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, rock claims that their uh, per song rate will be two to three times higher than Spotify and other nine cents. Yeah, yeah, right. Or point nine cents. People people are getting robbed though. It's it's ridiculous. So the I guess the, the essentially uh, you can opt. So the interesting thing about this is so when you Sign up for your streaming service and pay your, I think the rate's like 10 bucks for the base, you know, just similar yeah. to Spotify. So with this, you can pick a favorited band, essentially, hmm. and ten per, up, up, up to 10% uh, will be sent to them monthly. 
right, so they're going to take, like, the Spotify rap. Spotify and they're going to be like, service. if you actually land, like, that spot, like, all your cash goes well, to Well, no, no, you, you pick this artist Let's when go. you sign Yeah, so I was saying, like, so your Spotify yeah, yeah, rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, if you land in, like, that band's, like, top five, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, yeah, you, like, you contributed. And, like, they're going to give you, like, a little pat on the back. It's like, thanks, pal. Yep. So, essentially, you that ten up to 10% of your annual, or is your monthly is it, fee will go to that band. It's a neat idea. It, it, it's a neat idea. It's but, cute. It's so, cute. Well, it's, and it's like the idea, you know, it's the same price as similar to other things and whatever. But, like, how many of these people are going to go from the Spotify that everyone has and knows? And it does right. the fact that this does nothing different. 0.0. You know what I mean? Unless, you know, somebody really is, you know, into a certain band and, and wants to support them. But it's like, it's like the idea I understand. And it's a neat concept, but it's like, I don't think it's just, it's just not going to grab. You're not going to pull away, and you're not going to give enough. God, like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm one of the dinks, that actually. I pay for premium service for two streaming services. Mm-hmm. I do, too, now. So. And there's some other like side benefits, because like, I get like certain TV subscriptions and like whatnot. Yeah. But I actually think my Spotify is like completely on its own, but I don't want to get rid of Spotify because Spotify is like probably like my biggest outlet, and it's also like where exactly. we're most prevalent right. because like our Correct. podcast yeah. is basically hosted by yes. Spotify, so I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> right. And I'm a, thanks Spotify by the way, and Anchor and yeah, your thanks, free uh, podcast hosting. But it, I, I just know. I thought it was interesting that, that it's a thing and, and people are trying. And to it's not the first like even the world. Like the the that big Facebook page, the world metal scene tried doing a thing where like it's like oh we'll do music sharing here and like it'll be like about the artist and for it's like it's not convenient, boys. It's not convenient, and the creators then nuke your group. You as soon as they see the algorithm popping up of you, oh you're doing stuff that we can't make money on, yeah, nuked. Bye bye. Do you know why Spotify is so successful? Uh, probably because some geek actually came up with the outline and the algorithm that runs fluently. Like, why is Mark Zuckerberg so s- successful like Facebook? Because Facebook the runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally, Facebook yeah, runs, yeah. and it never crashes. Spotify has the algorithm, the structure, and the platform they could, that they will could, run and will never crash. They could that is why playlist, the CEO yeah. makes the three point whatever billion dollars and all of the artists that are on there probably three point billion artists make absolute squad mm-hmm. like that and that's all it is it's it's, it's a geek culture and that's why i'll go back to the previous point one percent of yes guys one percent one percent of the music industry is going to make it well that's that's how you got to tip the scales though right and that's why being educated is so important i can't stress that enough the only way you can stop it is to not go well, no, it's, it's not. Like, even how that, do you right? make an NFL team change your culture? You don't go. Well, guess what? Every NFL stadium is generally sold out. No, I mean, look, the Panthers. Okay, the Panthers just this week posted tickets for forty-five cents because they can't fill the stands because their team sucks. They'll probably Absolutely sell out for forty-five cents. The Patriots are still fucking selling out tickets even though our team is garbage. You know because I mean? we're from fucking. Boston we had, we right. had five. Well, there's a <laughs> twenty-year wait list for that season ticket. Exactly. And like. And so, really, if I would have got on that twenty-year waiting list the day I saw it, I'd be a, I'd be a season ticket holder right now. Yep. And guess what I would be doing? Going to watch Probably not this podcast. Two and nine <laughs> fucking Patriots. Fucking. My family would be uh, being supported by Dave's Foundation. I'm just kidding. That is a bad joke. I am so sorry. Uh, bad joke. Bad brutal. joke. Bad sorry. joke, Marcus. I'm really um, so the uh, but like. I mean, at least we have our defense to write about, right? Like, listen, you can talk. Our offense is terrible. Dude, our defense is still top 10. Let's go. Top 10 of what? Washington didn't put up, like, 40 fucking (laughs) points. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's caveat that. Let's go off of that. Washington, right? I don't want to talk about ball. Listen, I know. but, But let's talk about it in the music industry, okay? And let's compare the two. Because Washington had a problem that people didn't like. It was their name, right? They didn't oh, like yeah. their name. Commanders. People changed the name of the Washington football team, correct? You will never change convenience. But they changed the name. How did they change the name? They complained about it. They put up enough stink about it, and they gave alternate options. And that's what we're talking about in the music industry. That's what I'm trying to get to. Is it if we have educated artists now, 
Yes, convenience. It has nothing to do with educated artists. Okay. It's convenience. I have a question. When you buy a phone, when you buy, when you purchase a phone, right? You get a brand new phone. You get the new hotness, whether you're fucking Team Apple or Team Android. When you get a new phone, which one of these streaming services is automatically on it? Well, it depends on your uh, producer. If it's Apple, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, music, music, Apple music. Apple music. But is does Spotify automatically download on anybody's phone? No, that's, that's U2. U2 automatically downloads on your phone. YouTube. No, U2. No, no. Like the YouTube. band. No, 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 no. YouTube puts their music no, no, no. on your phone. Listen, you, Dave, U2. The, the, real, the real simple oh, point true. is yeah, yeah. every metal artist in the world can actually like pull off of like a... Uh, now, I am talking about the absolute average music listener. Yes. Absolute average music yes. listener. Like, no diehard for anything. Like, if I'm going to get swayed to something, like, I will... Like, the... the, the like, the... The, that person, they are going to go where the convenience is. Absolutely. Yes. And, and that's, the convenience that's... is either Apple Music, which is, I'm going to say that term loosely because I don't know if I've ever talked to anybody who uses Apple Music other than my stupid self. <laughs> my mother does. I actually like, I I enjoy Apple Music. Plus, the royalties is actually better for us. Technically, yes. I use Tidal. You get almost like point one. That's per actually play. like one of the highest. What I'm saying is... but. Like, something like rock, as an example, is never going to fly with the average dope-ass fan because, like, rock is never... Like, you can search for a streaming music platform, and the thing you're going to get pounded with is going to be Spotify, mm -hmm. Pandora, Apple Music. Yep. Yes. I and, like, go even further. iHeart. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, like... Yep. Amazon, like yep. Amazon, because Amazon YouTube has like their, there too, yeah. their thing. Like so, so I agree with you. But there's only one app that you all mentioned there that's on both phones automatically when you purchase them that you don't have to download, YouTube. and that's YouTube. If every single fucking artist only posted their shit on YouTube and none of these other streaming services, we could literally corner the fucking market to one aspect that they're already paying you for to have. So the CEO for YouTube can get like all fucking I mean, YouTube. Yeah, like, YouTube's owned by Google now, but your percentages are going to go way up because as opposed to streaming services, you're going to get a way higher percentages, a way higher percentage based on your viewership. Until they become number one and then they change their, their model. Which that happens a lot. And I'm sure they will. Dave, we're feeding the 1%. We, oh, we always will this be. This is a world of 1%. Absolutely. We, we are feeding be. the 1%. We're getting fucked. Like, find your B-level status and take it up the pipe because yep. that's all you're going to get. Yep. That's true. But YouTube will be the turning point. I'm telling you right now, for music, YouTube will be the turning point for Until music. Spotify fucking buys. Like, somebody, like, I'm, I'm just telling you. Yes. Like, convenience yes. is the thing. Like, yes. it's all about convenience. And you know what? YouTube music is not convenient yet. It's not. And that's why it's so important to be educated about the music industry to make these decisions. The to make the second best that they put that platform in place, they are going to put the same fees and some dickhead at the top is going to yep. get all the fucking cash for it. Yep. And they're going to find a way to, to yep, that's, that's how it goes. Which is fine. No, it's not. We can be a YouTube <laughs> podcast. I don't care. Streaming it's like, fuck, we can be YouTube. Can we sit down <laughs> It is. We can be YouTube's Listen, man. flagship metal podcast. Do you know what I hate? Do you know what I hate about all this shit? For five cents on the dollar. I don't want to say it, right? I don't want to admit it. Don't say it I just, I just, I just fucking hate him. Don't do it. Lars was right, dude. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, we got fucked. Shut it down. We Shut it down. We got fucked as musicians. I'm not even in here. He predicted it, and we got <laughs> fucked. I'm sorry. I don't like him as a person. He's a mediocre musician. I'm not a, like, I, like, yes, he's not great. He's not my, but like, he was fucking right. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Right? I had, right? had an epic Nap Napster <laughs> playlist. Epic. Bro, musicians got, like, you could at least I gauge, had raw cuts of, like, Slipknot. You could gauge album sales from actual right. physical album sales. Dude, we got fucked. All musicians got fucked. And Lars predicted it, and I'm sorry. I, I don't. I still don't like. I still think he's a dickhead. You know what? I, I saw that movie. I still can't believe Justin Timberlake found it Napster. <laughs> oh my God. He called it Napster because I was napping when he stole it from me. <laughs> uh, That's actually a really good movie. I love the social network. Uh, I was referencing the Italian job, but yeah. 
Uh, I mean, no, the Cooper Social is. Network. That's a good movie. <laughs> I've never seen it. Good for you. Hey, Thanks. you guys want to talk about Christmas? No. Hey, here's what you should get your Christmas metalhead, okay? Wait, I'm not home right now? Wait, I have to drive home after this? <laughs> I'll carry No, there's you. a couch behind you. You can just leave it right. there. <laughs> you can use that box as a pillow. <laughs> Connie, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the All right, so this is a revival of the um, the heavy metal over a six pack. What to buy your metal head for Christmas? I have a list if you'd like me to start. I would love for you to start, so I can. You should because like, we've been arguing back and forth. And, yeah, like, I no, no, you're like... doing your thing. <laughs> you're great. He side eyes us. Yeah, you're doing your thing. Fuck Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Again, too dumb to be offended. Uh huh. What? <laughs> Uh, so this is from Louder Sound. Number one at Amazon, you can get DC Slayer tag shoes. What? Yeah. They are literally DC shoes with the Slayer, whatever that is on. Bro, all right, but okay, I- I'll save my commentary work? for. I, I, I don't. All right, wanna... So if I if I still skied, it, how 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 exactly how durable would you say that that? It's DC. Is? I'm sure DC's fine. The flattest footed shoe for your skater punk child well, all who about likes the, metal music. It's Merry about, Christmas. It's all about the Ollie, man, because like you're gonna be rubbing right on the side of that foot. I guess um EMP also has an Iron Maiden one, Megadeth and a Slipknot one. Huh. Slipknot. For DC shoe. Uh, Maybe we, I've been falling around I've been a Vans guy for a long time, but <laughs> I prefer trucks. I'm more of an SUV guy. <laughs> keep your keep your free candy. <laughs> no, no, no. I want uh, that free Dave, candy. You're such a dick. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, number two, we have a Cannibal Corpse coloring book. <laughs> it's as gross as you would think it would be. Yeah, but only if you color it right. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, you can I make bet. it less gross if you just randomize no, the colors. That's, that's green blood. <laughs> Is it color by number? Uh, no. I bet it's like super detailed though. I mean, yeah, I mean, look at it. It's, it's yeah, we're going to make this intestine, this intestine purple. Yeah, yeah, you can make the insides whatever color you want. They're not intestines. They're sausages. <laughs> they're basically the same thing. Uh, yeah, There's more so shit in Essentially, that. it's, you know, bringing these black and white images of Cannibal Corpse's most hideous album covers to life. Make sure they have the red <laughs> color. I love the metal community. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know why we don't have more fans. It's so weird. <laughs> uh, number yeah, three we're all is, dying is, inside. Is, yeah, right. <laughs> number three is just displayed metal posters. So if you like those, <laughs> that's cool. Here's the latest poster from Shotgun Grandma. I mean, the you, hottest metal band. Shotgun Grandma. <laughs> These are all on Amazon, which is fun and exciting. Uh, if you go in the shows, we recommend some... Ear protection. Yeah. From who? Which company? Oh, uh, this is Center. S E N N E R. They're Party Pro earplugs. They look fairly legit. Oh, the, yeah. They look like the. Uh, well, I'm partial to eargasm, but I, I use eargasm like, yeah. myself. I gotta get the smaller things. They're too big for me. Can you try spitting on it? Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But then the spit in my Twice. ear. <laughs> <laughs> times. I just put the whole thing in my mouth. Nailed it. <laughs> was the first one on there? Did you cost extra for that? No, it wasn't. That's why. That's why I had to bring the second one in. Too bad. You guys have no idea what you're missing. <laughs> Sound bike. <laughs> we're not. We're not really friends. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even work here. <laughs> Who well, are you? Well, now we do. We better. Yeah. Right. Paid um, a fucking fortune for it, so. You guys are aware of, like, the Masterclass the stuff? Like, Masterclass is, like, it, like every celebrity has a Masterclass. Like, Gordon Ramsay has a Masterclass that you can get, look, do and, like, learn from him to cook and shit like that. You gotta pay for the stuff, but pretty much the, the people who do things professionally that do, like, lessons, essentially. Can you imagine getting lessons directly from Gordon Ramsay? That's I said omelette, you motherfucker! <laughs> it's not directly, but it's it's pretty much like like if you did like a singing course. Or, All right, so you know this is I mean? like the uh, overall overfan, like OnlyFans. Yeah, the, they're, artists. They're, only well, they're fans. courses. They're like to learn how to do whatever profession they do. So Makes it's OnlyFans episodes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> that you have to subscribe to. And it's generic, so they don't even say your fucking personalized name. Nope. Like they would on OnlyFans. Hey, Mock. That's not how you say my name. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to do. We, we got to tell every metal artist to just go to OnlyFans, bro. Mm -hmm. They got the best percentages for, for artists. It can be any kind of art you want. Mm -hmm. We're definitely not attractive enough for OnlyFans. Nah, nah, my feet are gross. Just for music. But my, my right foot, definitely. I mean, we'll just, we'll just <laughs> wear it specifically. Dildo helmets. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's in the Patreon that we don't have. Um, we have a Patreon. I know. Turn that up. Might be some money in there. I don't know. Um, I so seen it like going back years. to the masterclass thing, Metallica has a masterclass. Oh fuck! So I guess I'll just read here. Uh, if there's someone who's in a band just starting out or needs a jolt in the right direction, this mas masterclass class uh, from Metal's biggest band provides the ideal helping hand. Given the ups and downs Metallica has traversed over their 40-year history, their words of wisdom on band dynamics, songwriting, and business acumen. Covered in these 10 online lessons provide priceless knowledge, which is not true because you pay for it, <laughs> to all looking to follow in their footsteps. Yeah, we all want to be Metallica. The truth is, they got fucking lucky early and rode the wave. <laughs> They're also the first band featured on Rock. Oh. R O K K. Yep. <laughs> Weird, right? Find us on the app. Not three Ks, right? Only two. Only two. But yeah, I know. Please <laughs> be one of our top five listeners. Yeah. We get some Marshall headphones, the Marshall Major 4 headphones. I mean, headphones are fucking everywhere. I mean, take your pick. I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna help you with this one. Just fucking buy one. They all outsource from the same fucking parent company anyway, and just slap their sticker on it. So, can we modify the design? <laughs> can we etch the name instead? <laughs> like, yeah, I'll pay forty-five dollars more for a pair of headphones that say your shit on it. Okay. Yeah, aura is purple. Oh, look, from Korea, just like the other ones I bought. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is a quick one from Metal Sucks because this is the worst list that I could find. <laughs> we have Vibes High Fidelity Constant Earplugs, which look like they can go in any or orifice of your body. So that's cool. Any orifice? Oh, wow. Vibes, yep. Uh, uh, number two is concert tickets. Oh. I feel like they always do concert tickets every year. It's just like the gimme, the gimme. Number three is this Metal Blade Records 2023 Holiday Sale. That's not even an item. That is a <laughs> sale, which is probably passed by the time well, you're and it. isn't aren't aren't vinyls coming back now? Speaking like, of vinyls, we have a limited variant of Typo Negative's Life is Killing Me 20th Anniversary Edition vinyl. Yeah, I don't want that one. <laughs> And then you can get yourself a fully automatic belt-driven stereo turntable. Hey, that I would actually... Audio-Technica. I'd, I'd probably buy right, Public TV. service announcement, uh, announcement, if you actually see a turntable at like Bed Bath & Beyond, don't buy that one. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond went underground. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't under, exist anymore. They're gone. Exactly. Don't yeah. buy that one either. They're trying to charge too much for fucking foot massagers and towels. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's oh, what you I used to. I used to like Bed Bath. I mean, I uh, get yeah. all my cooking shit there. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was yeah, they had like decent stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, they just never let me sleep on their beds. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking assholes. They're shit in their home. I was in like the movie Click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god, I'm a fat guy. Where's the gray beyond? <laughs> get out of here, <laughs> prick. Uh, this is the next one. Is various teas from Brutalities. Oh. Right. Vanilla hailing from New Jersey, Brutality is a tea company with funny names inspired by metal bands and songs. They've got various teas offered Testament, Between the Blueberry and Me, Crantera, and Mango War. I don't, oh feel, I don't feel like Anthony feels very positive about his uh, Christmas list. Here. Well, dude, to think about it, like, do you know any fucking metalhead that drinks tea? <laughs> Probably most of them, to be honest with you. Okay, what? the first time we did this this segment, I actually bought the coffee bug that we talked about. Okay, that's coffee. All, all I do is notice, listen notice to metal and pet kits. You know, you cats. didn't call it a fucking teacup. We um, you we called actually, it a coffee mug. I think it was before you. We did this thing where we talked about um, it was like the the groupies for Slipknot or, or the the roadies for Slipknot, and like the the uh, guy who did like the laundry form and stuff was like way back when I used to find you know like drugs and condoms and now I find like tea packets and aspirin <laughs> and shit so <laughs> yeah we got, we got old <laughs> uh, there's another tea company devil's care packet from satanic tea company 
Ah. This isn't band related, but it's satanic because that obviously has Satan. to do with yeah. metal music. Metal is always satanic. Satan! Uh, Gwar has an espresso destructo from Grindcore Coffee Company. It's, it's coffee from Gwar. Okay. And, and it's probably thing a is Grindcore effect. Coffee Company. You know, this coffee, I've, I, I tried to buy once, and like it's corn? it hasn't been. Yeah, corn. The corn coffee. Really? I've been trying to buy corn coffee, and like it just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. It's like, well, take it off your fucking webpage then. Yeah, it's been like yeah, eight y- years. You, you pricks. paid for it, but we're gonna we're gonna wait to give you a refund for like three years. So. Oh no, I didn't pay for it. It's just not available. It's like, well, then take it off your website, you Bro, fucking clowns. I get coffee from one place, and I'm never gonna get coffee from any other place. Oh, well, it's because you're a classy yeah. fucking broad. What? But I. It's just I'm spoiled. Like, the rest of us fucking peons have to like try to like beg corn for coffee. You know <laughs> what? Now, now I know. It. Now Jonathan it's... Davis, will you please release your fucking coffee? I like, just want to get you fuckers for like, Christmas. I'm gonna give you a pound of Hawaiian coffee. Like, will Do you it. just like so like? I, always need coffee. I just want Jonathan Davis's fucking. You're gonna see coffee in I my face. I used to get. I used to get your Hawaiian coffee. Yeah, it's fucking phenomenal. I changed on it, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the flavors are. They can't be matched anywhere else. Everyone else has a bite. I How do. Cool. I do. Um, grounds and hounds. Never heard of her. So they do, um, all their proceeds go to animal shelters and stuff like that. Oh. Now I feel like a prick, but they just buy my coffee from, like, a regular grocery store. Yeah. Like, I, this is great. <laughs> I, I like the, the, these guys' coffee. I hit him, like, a thousand bucks, and I feel like an asshole. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Piece of shit. It's so piled over there. He's, like, taunting me with it. It's like... I just didn't move it because you, 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 uh, I don't have an envelope. <laughs> 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 I, I, feel, I feel shady putting it in my pocket. I forgot what was happening. I was like, why is there a thousand dollars sitting over there? <laughs> it's looking pretty flavorful. <laughs> <laughs> Mehegan's only an hour and a half. <laughs> oh my god. I can I can triple it, just give me an hour. <laughs> we can make your thousand dollars into three hundred and forty. I saw something I saw something today that said uh, if you're envious of Elon Musk, just keep in mind that if you only have $100 in your bank account, you're only 32 blackjack hands away from Elon Musk status. <laughs> this is an like interesting exactly. one. Yeah, right. It has a tall order. Yeah. So we're yes, going sir. through this list. And Anthony, the, you're doing like so good not the, being like derailed. The last one is a donation to the ACLU made in the name of John Dolman. Ronnie Radke, Tommy Vexed, or the conservative metal musician of your choice? Ronnie Radke. I'm going to donate some money in the name of Ronnie Radke. Because the only thing that feels better than being selfless is pissing off irrational douchebags <laughs> who watch too much Fox <laughs> News and make latently or expressively bigot comments. Awesome. <laughs> hey, you know, Christmas isn't Christmas without throwing fucking politics in there. <laughs> <laughs> that like a, like All right, Anthony stuff? had a pretty epic list. So no, my list was trash. Y- your list was so. Uh, let me add some class to this, to this list. Let's add some p- goodie bags to this trash list. Let's just say about headbangers boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm on a boat. <laughs> this is a cruise that actually uh, set sail. Hold on, let me find the dates. Sorry. This is a list of things we can't afford. No, it's right here. here. <laughs> October 28th and November 1st, 2024, from Miami to Porta, Puerto Plata, Dominican Republic. The Lamb of God, Headbangers Boat. So if you're feeling classy. It's got to be smelly, right? I would is it so. inside or do they do it up top? Like it's a cruise ship. It's like literally a boat. Is it a cruise ship or is it a boat? The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. <laughs> All right. So for one hundred dollars down, you can se- secure your seat. <clears throat> no thanks. <laughs> Add three hundred thirty-five per person for taxes and fees. Yeah, fees. That's oh, uh, dude. Don't you fucking hate when they add? Oh, one hundred fifty bucks for your ticket. Oh, uh, but four hundred dollars for fees. I bought an emotional support pickle for my wife for nine right, dollars, and it came out to like thirty-three dollars, and I don't know what happened. All right, so I'm actually looking at still currently available. Still currently available right now for the pre-sale. For a single rider. Let's see. All right, a single rider. This is a balcony on deck number nine. If you only brought yourself, or if you only b- bought your loved one to self, those four days are going to cost you $3,071. Now, 
if you wanted nice. to actually bundle it with like a cup like a buddy like a guest of two which is still available yeah, it's companion. only one thousand six hundred thirty five dollars per person which my quick is math is three thousand two hundred and seventy is a cruise it's for four days man this is what i'm figuring out right? this is the one where the guy that's like so fell off the, like fell off the edge like last year and like drowned it down. Oh, that's right. oh yeah there's no laws in international waters so they just, yeah you just get it like five miles that way and like and anything goes murked. dude you, have you ever watched the documentary the fucking cruise ship murders the serial killer that was a fucking uh, dude. There's some weirdos that go on cruise ships. <laughs> there is a midship weirdos. balcony for a single rider. It would be 3,281. If you want to bring a buddy, it's 1,740 per person. If he has two buddies, it's $1,277 per person. And if he actually has three buddies, you can take them all for a four-pack for $1,045 per person. Which is actually, 56, for a four-day cruise, all-inclusive is not bad. If it's all-inclusive, that's not terrible. I think it's all I mean, they have to be all-inclusive. What are you, <laughs> what are you going to do? Fucking pay a food vendor out in the fucking middle of the Atlantic? Hey, yeah, I'm going like, with some of those tacos. So, yeah, bro, you going to give me a cheeseburger or you, you're not going to give me a cheeseburger? Give me the fucking hot dog. <laughs> I see your cart, motherfucker. <laughs> give me three dollars for the taco. All right. I if you if, the road. if you actually like went on a cruise and it was not all inclusive, I would feel bad for you. Yeah. 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 I mean, most of them are. I mean, especially because I mean, like you're. That's all you can do. It's like, <laughs> well, that's the you ATM. Can't, like, just ran, go home like, if you want. The ATM on the boat ran out of money. What the that's fuck what am I, I mean, supposed to like, do right now? Well, like think about it though. Like they can't. Like it's bullshit and it's a racket because they can't legally tell you like yeah. You can live on this boat out in the ocean for four four days, and our insurance company is just going to allow you to just fucking stay here with no meal plan. Exactly. They can't legally yeah. fucking say that. Right, yeah. So, I, yeah, all included is fucking bullshit. There's, like, you have to fucking provide that. So the Headbangers Cruise has a, um, a headliner, Lamb of God, uh, Death Clock. Interesting. And then other supporting acts are going to be Kamara. Kamara. Poison the Well. Okay. At the Gates. Soulfly, Exodus, Napalm Death, Corrosion of Conformity. It's going to be a bunch of dudes over 45. And I feel like it's awkward. After the burial, Currents. Is there like like, like a section? Bleeding Through, Unearth, Unity. I Hate God. I can't pronounce I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that one, guys. Uh, Mark Morton's <laughs> solo band performance. Cool. I mean, Lamb of God is there, so I mean. Stand up comedy by Shane Smith and Mike uh, Brutsky. I don't know either of those people. Appearances from Jose Mangan and Ricky Rockman. Uh, okay. Immersive, exper- Ricky Martin. Immersive experiences <laughs> with Land of God. <laughs> Lamb of God. So if you're feeling classy. I mean, She's the, in the superstition. Black, black cats, cats and voodoo dolls. So I brought this up to my <laughs> wife, and apparently, like, instead of doing this, we're going to Alaska from Vancouver. And I was like, yeah, it's like the same. Bro, I've never been to Canada as an adult. My mother went like to Alaska. She said it's scary. I've heard nothing but good things about the Alaska trip. Oh, it's like a cruise trip? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were just going to Alaska because Alaska <laughs> in general kind of blows. But, like, yeah. There's nothing no, no, we're to good. do. Like, I mean, yeah, it's we're, like we're, here's we're snow, bo- unlimited daylight, and bears. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's literally all you got. We'll pay you to live here. Please just stay. <laughs> you guys, go. you guys laugh, but like, like I heard this. I was like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to spend five grand on. <laughs> That's why we're laughing. I'd be down. Are you gonna kill something while you're out there? There's, what? there's hunting for everybody. That's because that's all there is. Exactly. There's more wildlife. Bro, you could knock down a fucking elk from like Russia or some shit. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a dead animal person. Yeah, me neither. I just think they're delicious. Mm. Right. I need somebody else to kill it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to look it in the eyes. Like, yeah. yeah you, see, you see that cow? He looks awesome. You slaughter that thing. <laughs> don't de- let me. Don't let me watch. <laughs> You're more of a delegator. <laughs> it's like I. I want to know Bessie had a good life. <laughs> yeah, she didn't. <laughs> we're, 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 a, we're a factory farm. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah be, Bessie's life is awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, we kicked her in the head before we euthanized her. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Dave, what you, Dave, what are you getting your metal head for Christmas? You got anything? Yeah, I was going to ad-lib this because I knew that these lists were going to suck. Your so, list sucks. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you're a bag. I got five things. I got five things That's for your metal head. That's more things than I had. Yeah. Okay, you're going you're gonna to appreciate it. Custom. Custom beer mugs. Go get your metalhead a custom fucking beer mug. A big old fucking tankard. You know what I mean? Tank it. Something fucking Those nice. Those get so heavy after you fill them. Yes. But it's going to have your name on it. That's and that beer's going like to so look like, and taste awesome. My cans are so handy because they're like, they're just... I, don't, I, I even stopped using koozies. It was like, it's like, takes God more damn it, that was it. my next fucking one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm burying the lead. He's custom koozies. He's Get just him. trying to sell merch for... No, no, I'm, I'm not. Kidding. Custom koozies, bro. Get your metalhead a Get custom Get yourself koozie. a minus 22 <laughs> koozie. <laughs> Take yourself to minus22.org and find yourself a marketplace full of Christmas items that you can send to your loved ones. I think minus 22 should have a cruise. Probably should, but I can't afford a boat. <laughs> I don't know how to sail. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm afraid of the water. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> broke my rudder. <laughs> Listen, just tell me your I cause, man. I'm sure Carnival will like, just throw one out there. And be like, yeah, you'd yeah. think that, but actually, like when you reach out to these big industry businesses and stuff as a nonprofit, they all just tell you to fuck off or don't even respond. Yeah, yeah. fuck you, Carnival. They're like, oh, you got a cool mission? Yeah, I don't want to read that three paragraphs or even one. I, I don't care. Fuck you. Like that's that's the message you get all the time. How do I get rich? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Aren't, aren't you already? cool? Well, that's Next, just, that's just it. I know a ton of people are like, oh, you didn't start the business before you started the non. Like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, no, I want to make a nonprofit to like you know actually help people. Oh no, you need to make an industry first. Like, oh okay, my bad. I was I was waiting on my trust fund parents to fucking <laughs> give me millions of dollars to start uh-huh. a great industry to start a nonprofit out of. Uh-huh. Sorry. My mom gave me a notebook of all the uh, debt that I owed her <laughs> That's thing, isn't it? at the end of my 18 years of life. Yeah, I was a. She's like, I'm like, mom, there's something in here about like me being 13 and like you giving me a ride to the movies. She's like, oh yeah, I tracked it. <laughs> That's still wild. Is it a write-off? <laughs> Is you laugh. I'm not kidding. That's no. fucked. That's fucking wild. I laugh because it's oh. awkward. That's really <laughs> fucked up that she did that. To you, I owed dude. my mom like three grand after I graduated. What the fuck? That's insane. No. Okay. Hold on. It's not your fault you exist. Fuck that. Did you pay it? Technically, it's her fault that you exist. Exactly. Did you pay it? Oh, I paid it. Oh, god damn it. Get your money back. Give her a receipt. We bartered. No. <laughs> no. Fuck that. I went and got my oil burner license. I was like, I will clean your furnace for life. Bro, it's nobody. Which I, I'm, I'm, I'm facing that nightmare like. To this day, too. None of us had a choice in being here. Okay, <laughs> 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 yeah. fucking none of us. That's like, true. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. I don't want to get too personal. But like, the fucking uh, mom notebook, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, that thing was wow. like a. The girls had one too, like Michelle. Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember she, she was, she was oh, yeah she had a notebook. What the fuck, dude? I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be. I, this is how my parents retired early. <laughs> like, they, <laughs> they took all the money. They took came. all the money from the children. <laughs> it's like, well. They would be our Your schooling income. costs us this. You playing football for six years of your life costs us this. And like blah, blah, this, blah, blah, this. And my calculation to oh. you owe us $10,403. How would you like to set up the payment? Payment plan. Ma? Huh? What? <laughs> Wait. So huh? I just, I just, I just, what? What? Huh? What? The fuck you th- what? Bro, I didn't ask to be here. <laughs> You're fu- like, what are you? Put like, me back. You're like, the, you're like the worst kind back. of central fucking bank. Like, Open oh. up, bitch. I'm climbing back up. Fuck. That's just fucking. This up. bastard's coming back. Dude, I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I can't get on board with any part of that. That just sounds. That's, that's I'm so sorry. I feel like I, I feel like I digress. It's you're all right. right. It's just, it's so what else do you have on your list? Concert tickets. <laughs> I already said local, that. Local, but local. Band concert tickets, not Ronnie Radke's shit. All right, <laughs> go find their favorite local bit. They have one if they've been to local shows. It costs you more than twenty five dollars. You're doing it wrong. Correct. Correct. Now I hate to I hate to I hate to piss on the uh, national acts, but I mean it's getting fucking retarded. Mm-hmm. Hundred something dollars, and it's not like they're putting on like a f- three four hour set no. like they used to do no. back in the day. They're still gonna like, do, like at thirty mo- minutes. At most, it's an hour, but it's likely gonna be that thirty minutes, which is an absolute fucking crime against like it's humanity. It's a travesty. It's a 
fucking travesty. But that goes back to the venue. I, th- I feel like the, right. the venues drive this shit. But it like, doesn't. It goes back to the bands rolling over for the venues. Everybody's fucking, oh, this is just the way it is. Like, uh, this is the shit. This is the, this is the sentence that pisses Dude, me I'm off. on tour. Like, you can play Big Night Live, but, like, your tickets are going to be, like, $99 a piece. It's like, okay. <laughs> the sentence that pisses me off the most in all these industries is, like, oh, that's just business. No, motherfucker. Business is determined by our fucking agreements, and you're racking up these fucking agreements because your friends are doing it. You're seeing them get away with it, so you're doing it. 100%, you're a piece of baby. shit. You're a fucking piece of shit. Anybody who says, oh, that's the price of business. Yeah, fucking put your own socks in your mouth. <laughs> Wait, is that one of the list items? Socks? Yes, socks nice. is the next one. Metal <laughs> right. socks. Bring it back. Yeah, number yeah. four. One percent. Number four. Yeah. Swear to God, number four. Nice job. Listen. Nice job. We all have to drive home, you know. Listen. <laughs> Nobody has to drive so- home. You know that. Socks are the best gift you can get on Christmas. I don't care what anybody says. Socks are fucking phenomenal. I got holes all in my If socks. you get metal socks, it's even better. Dude, socks and that underwear for heavy. Christmas? Comfiest shit ever. Now, I can't get socks for Christmas because my dogs just fucking eat them. It's, like, <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely your take. I'm actually, li- I'm actually wearing mismatched <laughs> socks right now because my dogs are prick. Yeah, mine are, the, mine are holy. The last one came out as a joke, but I kind of mean it because I've been to a lot of <laughs> a lot of metal shows. <laughs> if somebody you know and love is a metalhead, please buy them deodorant. <laughs> Do you have smelly, <laughs> smelly people? Please you buy out? them deodorant for Christmas so when we go to these oh. shows, we can stand next to each other and not fucking hate our existence. I've gone to some metal shows. Where there are some fucking stinky, raggedy motherfuckers. You motherfucker, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> and I just want to give out deodorant at these shows. Hey, so bu- please, for the love of God, buy your metalhead a fucking deodorant set for Christmas. Hey, my Thank boss you. has got all natural. <coughs> Tell me that. That's fine. There's all natural deodorants out there. No, no, uh, no, no. He did go just... Harry's for a dollar told me he was sending me everything. Okay, water is natural. Go fucking soak yourself in water. He showers <laughs> regularly, but he just doesn't wear deodorant. All right. All right. I don't know. Well, to your person. I, I blame the military. I blame the military. Fuck the military. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? I blame, I blame <laughs> the military for a lot of shit. But yeah. Congress. All right, we're done here. Dave, land this plane. Okay, so first, the military started the industrial complex with... <laughs> It's a, big, okay. it's a big play, and you got to go around a couple times. That's it for us, kids. We are heavy metal over I swear to God, I quit. The only place. Am I fired yet? For local, national, and international rock metal and beer reviews, send them to us. We will tell you how bad they suck. <laughs> Mark, wow. Anthony, and Dave. <laughs> we are three mad men. That's our initials. We run this show. We do this stuff. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll catch you next time so you can tune into even more monotony. We love you. We'll catch you on the flippity floppy. Toodly doodles. That's the beer review. Welcome to the new season of Chaos. <laughs> Yay! Wow! <Whoa>. Bye. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, hey, oh. There, Chris. <laughs> that is the end of this episode. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting episode of Heavy Metal Over Six Pack Podcast. Marcus, Dave, and Anthony signing off. Check out the podcast at HMOA. 6pack.automatic.net Email HMOA6 P-A-C-K at gmail.com Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.